Mods is Rum here. Welcome back to our life, back to DLC. We're here wrapping up almost the birthday party. Yo, Randy. Or no, okay, I guess it's not Baxter coming here. Miranda's big brother slipped through the few cracks in the wall of dancers until he reached the heart of the floor. Food's here. It's cake time. Woo! Yay! Miranda gave a final gleeful twirl on her tiptoes. The birthday sash fluttered. Tara waved at you and Cove. Oh, yeah. Let's eat. The gang reunited back at the refreshment tables. And there, <laughs> Baxter. And there, along with Miranda's parents, setting out the sandwich platters for lunch was another figure, a distinctly monochrome figure. He acted entirely at ease behind the table, busy doing a final check over a chocolate fountain. It was flipped on and slowly liquefied chocolate began to trickle out. Baxter did it. Is that Baxter? Miranda peered closer. She'd come face to face with an unexpected acquaintance in a gathering of the people she knew best. Yep, he was here before too. Oh. Oh, why is he setting up a chocolate fountain for my birthday party? Terry's hands went to her hips, and she came out with the whole story. Tell the birthday girl how much this man has actually helped with the party. B-Man was a crucial member of the secret party planning group who made this whole thing happen. Really? Miranda looked back and forth between Baxter and Terry at a loss. Uh -huh. Baxter is nice, and I think he can, can't stand to see an event fail spectacularly or something. But for whatever reason, he wanted to help out. He took us to the store to get the surprise supplies, made cupcakes, put up decorations, and did just about everything for that chocolate fountain. It almost had to be nixed like three times. Baxter kept his professionally polite demeanor the entire conversation, despite the fact he had to have heard what they were talking about. Feigning innocence, he came around to the other side of the table to properly greet the guest of honor. Hello. Happy birthday. Thank you. She barely knew what to say after finding out exactly how much he contributed. But her gaze dropped and she tugged at the sash self-consciously a minute before. She was the life of the party, embracing the cheesy glitz with gusto, but in front of him she felt childish. It was everything he expected and wanted to avoid coming to pass. Baxter gave a considered smile. It should be able to manage the fountain now. It's running. I hope the rest of the party will be a lovely time. We're leaving already. Her question was barely a peep. She had to muster all her confidence to say that much. Yes. My job is done. I was here only for that. You forced yourself to keep an eye in front, uh, keep an even face in front of Randy. You knew it was coming, but you still didn't like it. But well, she released her hold on the accessory and looked into Baxter's face directly. Um. It was really thoughtful of you to do all this. You should stay and enjoy the party too. You knew she'd feel that way. Randy would never take want to take anyone for granted. You're a gracious host. His words held sincere appreciation. The welcome, uh, the welcome extended enough to get your hopes uh. up. But I can't do that. The rejection was equally amiable, amiable, amiable. It didn't make it less disappointing. You don't owe me anything. Certainly not a place among your real friends at your birthday party. There's no reason to feel guilty. Now, if you excuse me, take care. With a kindly wave that left no room for further arguments, Baxter breezed past your group. That was it. He was gone. Carrie's shoulders hung low. She had been able to have fun when Randy arrived, but the fresh reminder of what happened made all the regrets resurface. Cove could only silently rub the scar on his left arm, and worst of all, Randy's cheer hadn't returned after Baxter's vanishing act was completed. He'd earnestly wished for, for her to be happy, but it was an understandably hard to get into the celebratory spirit after that kind of revelation. It shouldn't have to end like that. It didn't have to end like that. You wouldn't let it end like that. If Baxter wasn't going to be at Miranda's birthday, there had to be something else he could be a part of. He mentally grappled with the problem and cast your eyes about trying to grasp any hint of an idea. Then something Terry said earlier came back to you. Terry? All three of the others glanced their way. It was the first crack in the awkward silence, and that was enough for Cove and Miranda to also take an interest. Yeah? Could you do me a favor? Yeah! Are you kidding? Yo, I owe you my life for making sure this wasn't a disaster. I'll help you out with whatever you want. Me too. I'll help too, if there's something I can do. Oh, Cove, thanks. Miranda, your birthday party's gonna be over in a couple hours, right? Mm-hmm. And Terry, the room is ours all the way until the building closes. Yep, you've gotta rent it for- Oh, you've gotta- gotta rent it for the entire day to get this place. Then tonight, after all the other guests are gone, we could use this venue for an after party. Or no, a brand new party. Another party? He tilted his head curiously. Incredulously, sorry. Yeah, another party. Not a birthday. It could be our very own... Summer Swarry. That was cute. Yeah, let's do that. And it can be for just our group. Me, Randy, Terry, Cove, and Baxter. We could try to set aside some of the food and drinks for later, clean up the mess when everyone is left, and we'll have slow music at this event. You know how much I wanted to dance, and I'd do that with him. Fuck yeah. A, 
Uh, uh, I don't know how to, you know, I don't know, we're, we're okay? I do not, I, I'm a terrible dancer, but like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. We're getting this dance with Baxter, whether y'all like it or not. <laughs> the first to affirm the idea was the one originally most trepi tri trepidatious about Baxter being there, but she answered with confidence. Let's do it. I'll be a member of the secret party planning committee for this surprise. And if he can do it for me, I can do it for him. And maybe Terry was right. We could all use more friends. Cub did not look convinced at all. Uh, of, it, of all of that. All of that. Though I couldn't disagree with the main suggestion. Okay. A white grin pulled at Terry's face, seeing this new plan forming. We should catch him before he's gone. He might not get the message if he escapes now. Oh, you're right. Thanks. And bye. You rush through the guests coming in all on all sides, clamoring for their lunch. Bursting out of the party room was like walking... Waking from a dream. The pink extravaganza was replaced by a plain white hallway, and the only sounds were your own footsteps echoing off the linoleum floor floors. You'd been able to forget that the normal were for a while, but had been there for the entire time, going on as usual on the other side of the door. But Baxter wasn't there either. He kept going through the lobby and into the parking lot. His hair might have fit in with the black tarmac and the white painted lines, but the camouflage couldn't fool you. He was at the end of the road, moments away from getting into his car. Pushing yourself further, you shot down the wide open space. He turned around, hearing something rapidly approaching. I swear. Ugh, don't be upset at me. Jacob, did something happen? Wait, please tell me it's not the chocolate fountain again. <laughs> oh, that's why he was upset. Your gate has slowed immensely in the final feet, and you came to a stumbling stop in front of Baxter. He waited patiently for an answer. Nothing is wrong. Well, that's really. If you could have fooled me, however, you shouldn't be running out of the building if there are no issues. Go enjoy the damned fountain. Baxter's grin was teasing, harmless, though you didn't miss the layer of genuine frustration at the stupid machine after all the trouble it had caused. He smoothed his face and shirt out in fluid motions. I'll be fine. Perhaps I'll take a nap, hmm? oh, You're so cute. You can go take that nap and come back, though. I'm going back. I just have to ask you something first. I see. I'm all ears. Okay. So I know you're already done a lot. I've, I know you've already done a lot for this party and us. But if you're not too exhausted, can you come here again tonight? Uh, around 7 p.m. Baxter's almost unshakable smile was lost to suspicion. Not good. This was a surprise you were planning. You threw out the first cover that popped into your head before you could speak the obvious question on the tip of his tongue. The thing is, I don't want to ride home with Terry. <laughs> That's rude. We, um, need ha no, fuck no. It's important. I can't tell you why I'm sorry. I just don't know what I'd do without you for that. Oh, let's do this. <laughs> A razor sharp smirk crossed his face. The gaze cut right through you. Even more, not good. But he wasn't there when Terry mentioned how long you'd have the room. Baxter might know something was up, but you assured yourself he couldn't guess exactly what. You stood your ground. Certainly. Certainly, Michiko. I'll be there at seven on the dot. Ooh. Kiss. <laughs> it does not feel like we're dating, though. <laughs> Feels like if you're just friends with Benny at this point. Your lips brushed against his face in a tiny peck. It was only for a second, but his warmth lingered even after, and so did the sparkle in his dark eyes. Thanks, I'll see you soon. It's settled. Yes, you will. Okay, have a great nap, boyfriend. Baxter parted from you yet again, but as soon as you saw him off, you felt good about it. This time, him leaving didn't mean he was simply gone, and then you'd have time to prepare for his return. You found your way to the party room just in time to sing happy birthday. Sliding alongside the rest of the group, you acted as if you've never left. Cove chuckled and quietly welcomed you back. Oh, Cove. <laughs> Cove, I hurt. Tara's confetti cake was placed in front of Brandy at the head of the table. The 19 candle you picked up from the store yesterday was lit by her dad. When she blew it out, the room filled with cheers. Her friends and families ate sandwiches, salad, and cake. The chocolate fountain was a huge hit too. Thank goodness. Miranda, Cove, Terry, and yourself each squirreled away a plate of extra desserts and snacks for the secret party. Soon guests got a second win and more dancing commenced. Though you and your friends took it easy on the sidelines instead. Every single one of you can enjoy yourself to the fullest now. And you did for the final couple hours of the party. When it got closer to dinner time, guests began to trickle out little by little. Many of them came to hug, came by to hug Miranda and wish her the best for one. But her, wish her the best once more. Now it's how Miranda's 19th birthday concluded, and how the preparation for the summer soiree began. You informed the team on when Baxter would be arriving and how they could, couldn't dally. The four of you, plus Miranda's parents and siblings, cleaned up, tra cleaned up trash and took down the decorations that indicated a birthday was going on. One of the tables in the sound system was left in place for the summer soiree. You also recovered the white bow from under the table where Terry hid it earlier. It was still in pristine condition. Perfect. 
At 6, 6.50, Miranda kindly used the last of her birthday girl power to ask her family to get out of there so her friends could have their own party. The Edgar clan and the Sept had been kicked to the curb and graciously made themselves scarce. Jude helped up a peace sign, held up a peace sign as he shut the door behind himself and the rest of the folks taking their leave. At 6.55, you double-checked the dance floor for any debris. It was spotless. At 6.58, you wandered around the room, trying to pick out the best place to stand and wait. Terry teasingly wondered aloud if that's what she looked like before Randy arrived. It was. At exactly 7, the door cracked open. Excuse me, may I come in? Unsure of what he was walking into, Baxter paused at the precipice? Precipice? Ah, uh, yes, come in. Uh, my boyfriend. That's my man. <laughs> that was all the encouragement needed. Baxter came into the bat party room. He smiled graciously at the cluster of people suddenly standing ahead of him. Cove leaned over stiffly like a balloon, slowly deflating. He whispered awkwardly into your ear. So... What are we supposed to say now? Are we, so, are we shouting surprise for this? Uh, surprise! <laughs> so cute! Aww. Unexpected, not to mention delayed exclamation at his entrance gave Baxter a start. Welcome. How good of you to come, Baxter. But the way Terry rubbed her hands together and the vague sense of satisfaction in her tone, she was giving the impression he'd fallen into a nefarious trap. Now the guests have, arri have finally arrived and we can begin. What? What do you mean? I should think the guests have left by this point. Baxter had generously a low had a generously low level of confusion at the strangeness, merely raising his brows his brow rather than making a hasty retreat. Even though Baxter would probably be the last person you knew who'd be scared off by villainous shenanigans, you decided to avoid any potential misunderstandings. Well, we're here for a summer soiree. A summer soiree, you say? You've got it. This event is Miranda's birthday no more. She dramatically crossed her arm over the other and flung them outwards, as if wearing off the entire concept of a birthday. Terry had to rent this room for the entire day, even though we only needed it until the middle of the afternoon. So we decided to use the last few hours we had here to have another party, one that's for the group of us, so you're invited. You parted from the bunch to position yourself right in front of the stunned Baxter. Aww! You didn't flinch as she draped the white feather boa over his shoulders. Baxter's mouth opened wordlessly as he stared down at your face. He tentatively lifted up a hand, brushing his fingers against the feathers surrounding him. He had to check that it was truly there. Then, with eyes still wide, a delighted grin grew across Baxter's face. Oh, are you happy? I'm like the best girlfriend you'll ever have, right? And then we'll break up and forget about each other for years. To be honest. I must admit, I assumed you were scheming something, but I absolutely did not think it'd be this. I never should have doubted your ability to throw a surprise party. Terry, Randy, and Cove crowded around two of you to reform the group with the newest member. <laughs> Didn't I tell you the best way to have something be a real surprise is if you do it all at the last second so no one even has a chance to put it together? You're very good. Yes, you did. I suppose there are some advantages to the strategy after all. And so the summer soiree commenced. You hung around the almost barren snack table. It was the only piece of furniture left behind from Randy's party. There weren't even chairs, mostly. Randy had joked that Baxter could take the throne now if he wanted to. That part came with the room. He courteously declined. Dinner was simple, more sandwiches and salad. It was almost um, it was also a mostly quiet meal, but that's exactly what was needed. At 7 a.m. that morning, you had left to prepare for Miranda's birthday. 12 hours later, he was still there. Lazily enjoying one another's company after an extremely long day couldn't be overappreciated. I, uh... Uh, Kelv wiped crumbs from his mouth after he was done eating and just Baxter without being spoken to first for a change. There's a dessert for you, too. A slice of the cake and one of the cupcakes. Thank you. I'd like to try the cake Terry made, but I've had quite enough of the cupcakes. Fair enough, he was well acquainted with the confections, even if he had never taken a single bite. Then can I have it? Absolutely. Please do. Don't forget the chocolate fountain. <laughs> Terry jumped in with another sampling suggestion. That contraption was Baxter's second, arguably more formidable enemy of the event. Still going strong, you've got to try it. However, he chuckled. Alright, if you insist. For all the trouble it caused, the fountain had indeed kept flowing even as the night went on and dozens of treats passed through it. That was the only part of the equation that was in good shape, however. The platter of goodies alongside it had been become a plate of baddies. 
What remains was some snapped pretzel fractions, scraps of fruit, and mostly the full-sized granola bars. Cookies and marshmallows had, to the shock of no one, been more popular choices. Those were gone, lo gone long before the first party had even finished. Now one to complain, Baxter plucked up a granola bar and slipped one, one end into the rippling shade of the liquid chocolate that he melted himself. Cove, meanwhile, wasn't going to settle for that, despite being the one who bought, brought them. He tore off a piece of his second cupcake of the night and stuck it, stuck that into the fountain. His fingers got coated as well. Baxter languidly watched Cove make a careless mess. You know, food that crumbly will get into the chocolate and... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Smirking, Baxter removed his bar from the fountain and flipped around. He leaned his backside against the edge of the table. Honestly. What does it matter if the chocolate clumps? I uh, wouldn't care if the fountain broke at this point. <laughs> He's like, fuck that chocolate fountain. All right, when we get married, no chocolate fountain. That, okay, noted. But this is where we're going to stop for today's episode. I really adore Baxter. He's so cute. He's so sweet. He did so much for someone he doesn't even know. Oh, I just hope he remembers us as like a good memory. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.